Hi friends, Father Kerry Walters here, pastor of Holy Spirit American National Catholic Church, and this is another Holy Spirit moment. This one on contemplative prayer as understood by Simon Weil. Simon Weil is one of the 20th century's spiritual giants. Although she published very little in her short lifetime, her posthumously published writings have exerted an incredible influence upon Christian thinkers ever since. Simone Weil is French. She was born in 1909 into a rather ruthlessly secular Jewish family and appears to have had very little a religious sensibility throughout her childhood. What she did display in her childhood was brilliance. She eventually became a philosopher. She knew Simone de Beauvoir and Jean-Paul Sartre, two primary uh, 20th century French philosophers, and she became a philosophy professor. But on at least two occasions, she left teaching philosophy in order to work in factories. And she did this because she had an incredible regard for people who had to work by the sweat of their brow for a living and the injustices that they often endured. And she wanted to share their lot with them. She felt such empathy for them. She was a volunteer during the Spanish Civil War, was injured, and was traumatized by the event. And when World War II broke out, she went into exile into England and proposed to General de Gaulle uh, the formation of an underground uh, French resistance group, uh, an offer which he declined. She died in 1943 of consumption of tuberculosis. Now, when she became an adult, probably because she had been so influenced by Platonic philosophy, and I'll discuss that a bit more in just a second, she really did begin to feel religious sensibility. And she tells us in a brief biography that she wrote that she had mystical experiences on several occasions. One was when she was at Solem Monastery um, in the midst of a terrible migraine headache. Um, she had mystical experiences at other times uh, when reading George Herbert's, the metaphysical poet's beautiful, lovely poem, Love. And she tells us that she was so struck by the sheer beauty of the Our Father in Greek that she memorized it and she would recite it over and over again. And apparently the recitation of the familiar words for her of the Greek Our Father served as a mantra, as it were, that emptied her mind to such an extent that she said she could feel the presence of Christ as she recited the Our Father. She came to write in journals and letters about her experiences, and there's a certain innocence and rawness about her writing because she says that she never read any of the standard Christian mystics. Everything that she writes about, she writes from personal experience. As a consequence, there is a certain amount of conventionality to what she writes about. That is, her understanding of contemplative prayer one through her own experience, pretty well accords with what other mystics have written about uh, um, contemplative prayer. Up to a certain point, uh, there is um, certainly convention there, but there is also innovation and insight that is unique, I think, to Simone Weil, and which is one of the reasons why she is a great spiritual giant. So, what does she say in brief about the nature of contemplative prayer? Well, it can be summed up in a single word, attention. When we enter into contemplative prayer, Simone Weil argues, we enter into a kind of heightened attention, a heightened alertness in which we open ourselves uh, without allowing any of our preconceptions to get in the way to that which is. And when we pray, that which is, that which we direct our attention to, is, of course, God. Let me read you what she says about attentive prayer. Attention, she says, consists of suspending our thought, that is, in the sense of leaving behind all of the preconceptions that we normally filter our awareness through. Leaving it detached, empty, and ready to be penetrated by the object, God. It means holding in our minds within reach of this thought, but on a lower level and not in contact with it, the diverse knowledge we have acquired which we're forced to make use of. 
how our thoughts should be in relation to all particular and already formulated thoughts as a man on a mountain, who, as he looks forward, sees below him without actually looking at them, a great many forests and plains. Our thoughts should be empty, waiting, not seeking anything, but ready to receive the object, God, in its naked truth. So isn't that an interesting image? Whenever we are in uh, contemplative prayer, certainly thoughts are going to scurry through our mind that tend to distract us from our contemplation if we're not careful. But what we need to do is to learn to look at them as we would look from the top of a mountain at the scenery below, a kind of peripheral vision, if you will, that doesn't distract us. We know it's there, but we don't allow it to overwhelm us and seize our attention. Our attention is directed elsewhere. It's directed toward God. Now, all of that is pretty conventional. We can read it not only in the other great uh, Christian mystics, but in non-Christian mystics as well. But now comes the innovation. In the first place, says Simone Bay, all attentiveness has a spiritual quality to it. Isn't that remarkable? She uses the example of studying a geometrical problem. If we truly are attentive to that particular problem, we are engaging in a spiritual process, even if we don't crack the geometrical problem. Focusing upon it, being open to it, being receptive to what it might be able to say to us, even if ultimately it doesn't say anything specific, somehow, according to Simone Weil, opens up the attentive channel, enables us to become more and more attentive in future attempts, and can only improve the quality of our prayer. She says something else, though, and it's really uh, remarkable. She says this, the solution of a geometry problem doesn't in itself constitute a precious gift, but it's the image of something precious. Being a little fragment of particular truth, it is a pure image of the unique eternal living truth. I think that this is her Platonism coming through. Simone Weil is essentially a Platonist. She believes that there are two realms to reality, the realm in which you and I dwell, the realm of of transience and imperfection, and the realm of genuine reality, of eternality, of infinity, of universals. Whenever we attend to um, a problem that is capable of rendering truth, we catch a tiny glimpse of that eternal realm, because truth, of course, belongs to that realm. And so any kind of exercise in attentiveness so Simone Weil wants to say, can only improve our ability to engage in contemplative prayer. We wait, as she says, when we pray contemplatively. That's a familiar word for anyone who knows Simone Weil's writings. Probably her most well-known book is titled Waiting for God. To wait is to refuse to seize. When we engage in contemplative prayer, we wait for inspiration. We wait for the presence of the Lord. We don't try to manipulate God into coming to us. We don't seize God or even try to seize God. And that's why Simone Weil really wants to draw a distinction between what she calls attention and muscular effort. She uses this as an example of the latter, of muscular effort. Uh, the student who really tries so hard to grasp what the teacher is saying that she, the student, freezes up and really doesn't learn anything. She struggles for three hours, perhaps, to grasp, but because she's struggling so hard, her focus is uh, diverted away from what she should be attending to, to the very act of struggling. Muscular effort is not called for and indeed is antithetical to genuine contemplative prayer, says Simone Weil. So, the fact that any kind of attentiveness is a spiritual exercise is the first innovation uh, that Simone Weil offers us when it comes to contemplative prayer. And the second is this. Contemplative prayer is always an act of generosity. Contemplative prayer is an act of generosity because in it 
we decreate another favorite word of hers. We decreate ourselves by putting our ego and all of our theoretical framework to one side in order to invite that which we are attending to in. We generously make ourselves the receptacle of that which we are attending to. When we attend in contemplative prayer, we desire to open the doors of our soul and our heart to God so that God may enter us. That's the second innovation. And the third is this. Contemplative prayer improves our moral character. Now, several other mystics say something like that, but they don't give the reason that Simone Weil does. She wants to argue that the more attentive we are, the more we see that all of reality, even the reality in the realm of appearance in which we live, is really quite extraordinary, suffused with the presence of goodness and truth and beauty. And the more we recognize that, the more we recognize how ugly evil is. Contemplative prayer, let me put it a slightly different way, can knock us out of our indifference our myopic inability to really suss out evil or um, wickedness. There's a certain banal quality to evil that tends to draw us away from that for which the soul yearns and admire us in uh, the normal, everyday uh, warp and woof of life that can be either downright evil or not conducive at all to transcending, such that we are able to discern the presence of God. Contemplative prayer makes us acutely aware of the goodness in reality, and just as acutely aware of the danger of wickedness, whether it's wickedness in the form of extreme uh, actions, or whether it's wickedness in the form of sheer banality. So what Simone Weil invites us to do then, on that mountaintop of contemplation, in which we look upon the valley with calm uh, distraction, is to recognize in our everyday lives that contemplative prayer will improve our ability to operate in the world as human beings and also draw us ever closer to that for which the heart truly, truly yearns. And that, of course, is God. I'm Father Kerry Walters, and this has been another Holy Spirit Moment. Thank you so much for watching. I invite you to subscribe to the Holy Spirit Moments YouTube channel if you haven't already done so. My friends, COVID is raging throughout the nation. Please, I beg of you, wear your masks, socially distance, and protect one another. I'll see you again soon. God bless.